Welcome to Amazing You Podcasts and YouTube channels, the channels where stories of resilience, triumph, and unwavering hope come to life. And in each episode, we dive into the inspiring journey of individuals who have faced the toughest challenges ahead, heads on, and emerge victorious. And our aim is to be a beacon of inspiration, offering a guiding light to those navigating through difficult times. Whether you today, you are dealing with health challenges, professional setbacks, or personal struggles, this channel is dedicated to uplifting your spirit and showing you that even in the darkest moments, there's a path to hope and triumph. So join us as we share powerful stories that transcend adversity, reminding you that resilience is a force within all of us. So prepared everybody to be inspired and find strength to navigate life challenges. So this is the amazing new channel where hope takes center stage. I am your host, Dr. Rani Fanakodi. I am a clinical hypnotherapist using rapid transformational therapy method. I am a Mars Venus life and relationship coach, breathwork coach, compassion practitioner, tarot reader, astrologer, past life regression practitioner, and chakra practitioner. And today, I am very blessed and very excited to introduce you to the wonderful, to the very special guest, Brian Proctor. Brian is the author of My Father Knew the Secret. And Brian was born in Toronto, in Ontario, in Canada, the same year as his legendary father, late Bob Proctor. And he was given the book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, which began his father's 60th journey into personal development. And for close to 30 years, Brian worked alongside his father as he taught some of the world's largest stages. Brian is an online marketer and was consistently the top affiliate in large product launches with joint ventures, bringing in millions in commissions and giving many entrepreneurs their first opportunities with a large audience to share their products and services. And Brian attributes his success to the lessons he has learned over the years from his extraordinary father in creating lasting relationships. And today, Brian is self-employed and he lives with his beautiful wife, Corey, at the south end of Pungent Sound in Washington State. And he is living his dream life where he spent time near water and enjoy nature at its finest. So very warm welcome to Amazing You, Brian. Thank you very much, Ronnie. It is, uh, it is truly a pleasure to be here with you. Today. Thank you so much. And you know, I was when I was reading the book that you are going to talk about today, I realize that it's going, it is two years this month since Bob Proctor passed away. Yeah. And we are doing the podcast. So this is not a coincidence, you know, this is not a coincidence. It's meant to happen. And it is really, really a great, great time to have you here. So thank you. You are welcome. And um, as the author of My Father Knew the Secret. So would you tell us a bit, tell the audience about how did you start that journey of writing that book? Well, you know what, Ronnie, it's funny. I started writing this book 
four years ago um, or a little over four years ago. So my father was alive at the time. Um, had no idea that he wouldn't be here when the book came out. Okay. Um, and it's funny, when I started to think about writing the book, I had different ideas running through my head. And I remember sharing them with Corey. Yes. And I said to her, I said, I wasn't quite sure how I was going to do this. And and Corey looked at me almost like I had two heads. And she said, Brian, so what is the one question you get asked at all the seminars, all the events that you're at with your father? Mm. It's what's being Bob Proctor's son. And I thought, wow, there, you know what? There, there it is. So maybe I can answer that question in a book, you know, and, and so I started writing and I started writing about all of the lessons, all the experiences, everything I learned growing up with Bob Proctor as a father, how he was as a father. And I thought I could really share and let the world understand who Bob Proctor was, not just the man on the stage, yes. uh, but as, a, as a private man as well. And as a father and I had a lot of fun, Ronnie, when I first wow. started reading it. Um, I shared with my father what I was doing. He loved it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had a lot of great conversations around it. I can I can remember many instances where I was sitting when I was talking to him about certain pieces that were going into different chapters. Um, I never knew what the title was going to be. Okay. And I had different ideas, and I kept saying to dad different ideas, and, and none of it felt right. Mm-hmm. And interesting. He just said to me, he says, Brian, take your time with it. Take your time. He says, it'll come to you when it's supposed to come to you. And he wasn't here when I came up with a title, but I I feel he inspired it. Um, I'll never forget. It was three o'clock in the morning. I woke up, I was having a vivid dream of my father. And this is after he passed away. Mm -hmm. And it was like this download into my head the, my father knew the secret. And that title was just, it felt so right that I actually got up out of bed and wrote it down because I wanted to make sure I captured that. And, um, you know, for, for, for anybody watching or listening to this, you know, my father was really a pioneer in the personal development industry. Yes. And he started talking and teaching and, and doing everything long before the internet and, and anything yeah. of that nature. And it was a struggle. Um, It was a struggle back then. Mm. And he just kept working at it because he knew that the material he had could help people change their life. Well, it was when the movie The Secret came out and the book, that really is what propelled him to a whole nother stage. What most people don't realize, he was 72 years old when that movie came out. Mm. And that is when he really got known around the world. So when I thought... The title came to me, my father knew the secret. It just, everything about it felt right. And um, and that's how it came to be. I finished, obviously finished writing the book after he passed. Um, it took me a little while to start writing it again after he was gone. Um, as you can tell by reading the book, I was very, very close to my father. Oh, yes. And um, But it felt good. And it has been, it's been an exciting journey since I've released it. Um, just seeing how people are reacting to it, the response it's gotten. And uh, I, I, as you can tell, Randy, I, I really put my heart and soul into that book to really share with the world, not only who Bob Proctor was, but what he taught me as his own son. Yes. And I know that everything he taught me and the lessons that I learned from him have helped me live a wonderful life. And I truly believe that anybody that reads this will get out of a book everything that you need to live a better life. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Brian, because when I was reading the book, I have my own copy here that the audience Mm -hmm. can see. And I would recommend the audience to get a copy because it's such a simple book, but that you really put everything in personal development where you talk about gratitude, about the power of intuition and you put it in such a easy language for everybody to understand. But at the same time, by bringing into the experiences with your dad, but also you brought in your own experiences, which is really beautiful how you brought all that together and made it so simple for the reader. It's like when I was reading the book, it's like I don't need to read anything else because you've so well put everything in one book and I really really enjoyed reading that all throughout until the end and I am doing my second reading of the book so 
It's really oh, beautiful. Thank yes. Thank you so much for having written that book, for helping us as well, because it's going to help not only this generation, but the generation to come, you know, because people need to know these are very basic things that helps us in our life. Gratitude, listening to our inner voice, because with the life that is going on today, we forgot the gifts that God has given us. And Bob used to talk about that, our perception, the will, our memory. And you put that into the book in your way, which was which is amazing, amazing, yes. And my other question to you, Brian, is what was the most challenging aspect of writing this book? And mm -hmm. what do you hope the readers take away from it? Well, you probably know the answer to that because you have read it. Um, yes. so, so the most challenging part of the book for me was that first chapter. Um, I get emotional when I think about it. Um, that first chapter really talked about the final lesson, the, the final things I learned from my father. Yeah. And I did not even start to write that until probably three months after he passed. Um, and it was very raw. It was very emotional for me. Yeah. And so that was that was the most difficult part. And that was talking about the death of my father and, yes. yeah. uh, you know, what what happened. Um, and. The important, there, I'd say there's a couple of really important pieces there, Rennie, if I can yeah. share. Yeah. Um, the first is, I'd like to share just a little story um, of how he was in the hospital. Um, yeah. When my father was at the end of his life, uh, he was in the intensive care unit in the hospital, and he was not doing very well at all. Um, I pretty much spent the last six months of his life with him, doing whatever I could to help him. Um, it was just... It was, I'll never regret it. It was, yes. uh, it was a very special time. And when he was in the hospital, just days before he passed away, I would sit in there with him for hours upon hours and we would just hold hands. Um, he would, we would chat when he was awake and he'd fall asleep and he'd wake up and we would chat again. But here's the interesting thing I really learned from him. I, I heard him teach this, but I actually got to witness him do it. Yes. Dad always said, we should never let our, current circumstances dictate the way we behave and the way we treat others. Mm. And he showed that in such a powerful way. You know, when, when I was in the hospital with him, I could hear other patients in the hospital yelling and screaming right. at nurses and doctors and not being kind. Mm. I understand they're in pain. Yes. Um, here was my father. He was in a lot of pain. He was very uncomfortable. He had tubes coming out all over the place. Mm -hmm. And a nurse had come into the room and she needed to put in another IV. Mm -hmm. And she was really having trouble finding a vein. She was poking and poking and poking. And, you know, my father was not big on that stuff. And so it was not comfortable. Yes. Yeah. And I could see the nurse getting agitated. She was getting anxious and she was feeling really bad. And she started apologizing to my dad. And this is what my father did. Rather than snap or do anything, he just looked at her and he put his hand on her hand. Oh. And in a calm way, he said, he just said to her, he said, you know what, dear, you're doing a tremendous job. Mm. You can do whatever you need to do. It's all okay. Yeah. And it was just such a special moment. Um, it's such, such a simple concept. Yes. But here is my father. His current circumstances were not great. He was in pain. He was not comfortable. And it was more important to him to put the nurse at ease and make her feel comfortable. And in that instant, I saw the nurse relax. Mm. It was such a wonderful thing to witness. Mm. And the interesting thing was, it was right that next moment, bang, she was able to get the vein because she was relaxed and comfortable. Mm. And it was such a it was such an important thing that I got to witness. The other, I guess, final lesson that I learned from him during that time. Was Randy, he, he he always said to me, he says, Brian, keep talking to me. Keep talking to me when I'm gone. Okay. And he said, listen, listen to that inner voice. You, you know, we call that intuition. Yes. And I have done that to a T. I have continued to talk to my father. I go to a yes. quiet place here at home and I go into a quiet place and I have a conversation with him. 
And the voice I hear, I choose to believe it's him, whether it is or isn't, doesn't really matter. Mm. Uh, but I listen to that voice and I let it guide me. And really what I'm doing is I am letting my intuition guide me. I am following what my intuition says without a doubt. How many times we do something when we think, oh, I probably shouldn't do that, but you do it anyway. You always come back to regret it. Yes. Or you've been presented an opportunity and you think, oh, I'd love to do that. But, and you let all these excuses come in your mind. So you don't do it. Mm. And you think, oh, I wished I had done that. I have listened to my intuition now so strongly and let it guide me. That if something I feel is the right thing to do, I do it. If I feel it's not the right thing to do, I say no, and I don't do it. And I have followed my intuition so strongly since his passing. And I can tell you with complete clarity that my life has been led in different ways that I would have never expected, but the most perfect of ways. And I'm living a life that is truly incredible because I really listen to and follow my intuition. So that's, there's a long winded answer for you, but those are, those are two of the very valuable lessons I learned from dad. And it was all written around the toughest part of, of, of what I did within that book. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brian, because when you talk about. Over the course of our evolution, there's been a disconnection a disconnection from a natural and wholesome diet. We need to put back the good into our nutrition. That's why Juice Plus created the Omega Blend to contribute to your daily nutrition. A rich and unique blend that combines the best Omega sources nature has to offer. Like sea buckthorn, a golden berry that grows under the harshest conditions, braves the elements to become a resilient fruit and a powerful source for omega-7 with one of the highest omega-7 potency of any known plant source. Or pomegranate with a seed oil that is so abundant in omega-5 fatty acids that it has been valued and traditionally used for centuries. And microalgae, one of the Earth's oldest plant organisms. Invisible to the naked eye, but powerful and filled with omega-3 fatty acids to maintain your normal function of the heart, brain, and vision. Provided by nature, our Omega Blend is carefully selected from algae, fruit, and seed oils to give your body a wider spectrum of nutrients it needs, like the omega fatty acids 3, 5, 6, 7, and 9 in just one capsule. Juice Plus Omega Blend real nutrition, real simple. In the most challenging times. Yes. I learned that from him as well, you know. It's like now whenever I meet people, I don't know, he's, Bob Proctor is in my mind is because he used to tell us to listen to the videotape of On Attitude by Earl Nightingale. I, I'm sure you're familiar with that. Very and I've much. been listening to that hundred times and listening and, and it does change your attitude when you listen to that audio and you react differently. And now I start, every time I go out, I say, I have to make people feel better than before I met them. And I think of Bob all the time, how he used when I read your book, how he used to make the people, the nurses feel good, but also the people who took him in the ambulance, the two oh, guys yeah. who took him, he mentioned that, how he yeah. took them and, and remembered their name. One was called Mohammed and he, and he mentioned their name. And I, I don't know, that stayed with me for until it will stay for the rest of my life. I think that was very profound for me, how he treated people, you know, with respect, whoever they are, whatever they do, but he had huge respect for everybody he met. Yeah. Yes. He he really did. He really did. And that was a that was a special quality that he always shared with the world. And yeah. I certainly learned it firsthand and it has been invaluable to me as well. Yes. And he also and you also mentioned about how important it is to listen to our intuition. Yes. I think it is it is one of the most important gifts that we've been given, but we are so 
we are so busy listening to everything outside of us, you know, to the media, to the newspaper, to the friends, family, and but we forget who we are. We forget that voice, that divine voice, voice within us who is here to guide us. I think that's very, very important, like you said, how this is listening to your inner voice. People call it different names, inner ding, Louise Hay call it, some call it their gut feeling, their intuition. But yeah. listening to it, it will never, like you said, never guide you in the wrong direction, but it will guide you to the right direction. Yes. Nor because we are running. so much in our head, you know, so much with the noises around, so much that we've, uh, with uh, kept in our subconscious mind by the beliefs, the paradigms and everything that we forgot our intuition. Yes. Thank you so yeah. much, Brian. Thank you. Yeah. And it's very true. It's, you know, when you think about it, um, it's a skill that can be learned. Yes. And let's face it. We do live in a world that is a 24 hour news cycle. We're bombarded oh, yeah. with social media. There's so much going on. Yes. And, and, you know, if we were willing to take, just even 10 minutes a day to go to a quiet place, close our eyes and think about how would we like to live and how do we feel? How does it make us feel and listen yes. to whatever is flowing within our mind? And if we were to follow that, I know for sure we would all be guided in a much better way. Yeah. Yes. That's so true. Yes. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. And my other question to you, Brian, is as a child growing up, growing up with such a famous father, mm -hmm. what was your experience like navigating your identity both within and outside the, your outside the family? You know, <laughs> it's a it's a great <laughs> question. Um, if I can share one little thing here, here here's something. My early, I'll, I'll share my earliest memory of my father and really how that set me up for life, in my opinion. Um, when I was young and, uh, you know, dad was on the road a lot, but whenever he was home, he was the one that would tuck me into bed. Um, and I think I, I, I look at it now. I, my, my wife said something the other day that really made a, it kind of drove home for me. She said, you know, when my dad first started uh, studying this material, he was reprogramming his mind. Mm. So while he was reprogramming his mind, I was just a young child. He was programming mine. Okay. So I didn't need to be reprogrammed. I was programmed with, mm. with everything that he was learning, which is really special. Yeah. But this is what he did to me when I was a young boy. He'd be the one that would tuck me into bed. And I can remember clear as day. Um, I'd be laying in bed and he would come and sit on the edge of the bed and he'd put his hand on my chest. He always said, it's really important to have a connection. Mm -hmm. And he would start to share with me all the special things, all the good things I did that day. Right. And if something bad happened to me that day, he wouldn't focus on the bad thing. He would have me look for the good in it. Mm -hmm. What good left him? What something did I learn from that? So he would have me focus on the positive, even when something negative happened. But here's the really special thing that he did. He said to me then, he would say, Brian, you are capable of being, doing, or having anything you want in this world. Mm -hmm. You're going to go to sleep tonight feeling great. You're going to wake up in the morning with a big smile on your face, feeling wonderful, and you're going to have a great day. That's that's That was the first things that I can remember as a, as a young child. And I'll tell you what he did for me, Randy. He, he set up a positive self-image and a positive expectation that I really could be, do, or have anything I choose. Mm. And that's a gift. Yes, um, I, I, I challenge anybody that's watching or listening to this, if you're a parent, to start doing that with your child or your grandchildren. Um, I did it with my children when they were young. And I see my daughter now doing it with her children, my grandchildren. And what my father did in that moment was he changed generations because of it. And... I look at my kids. I never had issues when they were teenagers. They were well-adjusted, confident kids. Um, they're adults now. And and it's just, it's such a great way of being. Um, and such a great lesson to be learned. I'll, I'll share one little thing, which I really, 
it touched me because it, it you know the the value of this obviously really meant something. I was on a podcast several months ago with somebody very very large um, that that a lot of people would know. I'm, I'm not going to say who he is, yes. and he was telling me that that story touched him so much. Um, he has a 16 year old son. And he said, I started doing that with my 16 year old son. And he says, at first it was awkward because this was something new for us to do. And he said, I would sit on the edge of the bed and just touch his leg. And, and he, and it was just awkward at first, but he said, we both grew to really like the experience of it. And he says, within a week or two, his son was always looking forward to that bedtime session. And he said, even at 16 years old, it made a difference. And it's changed the way his son looks at life. So there's simple things. You know, you mentioned the book, how simple it is. Mm -hmm. I wrote in a simple way because that's something that dad always drove home to me. When he taught the seminar, she says, it's always important that we, when we tell our stories and we speak our truth, that we do it in a way that anybody can understand. Absolutely. And sometimes it's these simple little things that can make all the difference in our world. Yes, thank you, Brian. That is so true. Because Bob teaching were always so simple, you know? Like yes. he used to say even a child could understand what he was <laughs> explaining. He always made it so simple. And yeah. and I think that's very important to make things simple because life can take us through many different directions, but when we make things simple, our life becomes simple, you know? That's, yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. like practicing what we preach. And mm -hmm. that's what I try, I do my best. Whenever I teach at university, I make things as simple as I can to my students. I, I keep telling them, no need to make things complex because when it's simple, you will remember it your whole life. And that's what Bob did. And that's what you did in the book as well. And that's what make it impactful. And that's what make it stays in our minds. So. <laughs> I really, really appreciated your book. And, and also it's great to see how you put into practice what your dad taught you. Yes, yes. I think that's, that's amazing, yeah, what he taught you. And we are coming to a, towards the end of the podcast. It's so, it's so inspiring talking to you, Brian. It's as if I'm, I have Bob in front of me. <laughs> I am so, so honored to have you. I don't know how we got connected, but the divine wanted you to be on the podcast because you are here to touch so many people. And and it, and it's Bob, through Bob as well, behind, with his hand behind, watching over us. And I, I believe that spirit never dies. So Bob is always alive, you know? Because Thank you, Rani. I do. I, I, I definitely feel like he is always here. And um, boy, if, if I could share one quick little thing. Um, Please as go you ahead, Brian. As you close this out, this is yes. this is something I shared in the beginning of the book and the end of the book. And it's something that my father really taught me my entire life. And that is this. What you want to think about is what will happen in your life if you're the best version of you every single day. So anybody listening or watching this, I challenge you. Be the best version of you every day. How do you treat those around you? How do you act? If you're the best version of you every day, I promise you life will continue to get better. It may be great already, but can always be better. And if we focus on being the best version of us every single day, we will accomplish and do so much more in life and we'll live a more fulfilled life. Um, that's something really valuable I learned from my father. And I made sure that was in the book in a way that it would, I guess, drive it home. So that, that would be my, certainly my final message. So thank you. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Thank you, Brian. And the last thing I want to ask you, what would you like to tell the audience today? People who are listening and hearing who are facing some tough times, what advice can you offer them to navigate and to overcome those adversities? You know, the one thing I did learn, uh, especially from my father, that uh, none of us are immune from adversity. Bad mm -hmm. things will happen. Oh, yes. Um, the key is, how do, we treat the, how do we treat the bad thing? How do we look at it? How do we respond to it? How do we react to it? Um, and the one thing I always learned that we need to look at life through rose-colored glasses. And yes, bad things can happen. 
But how we respond to those bad things makes all the difference in the world. And the key is to know that there's always something better on the horizon. These bad things don't have to last forever. Yeah. With if, if if we can look at it from the right perspective and know that good is going to come our way, we'll get through all the bad times in the world. Um, look for the good that's around us. And if something bad's happened, look for the good out of it. It might be hard to find sometimes, but if we can look for the good and then start working towards that, we will get ourselves out of any situation that we may find ourselves in. That's that That would be something I would really think about. That's wonderful. That's awesome. Thank you, Brian. And uh, how can um, the audience reach out to you, Brian, and tell us a bit more about the great things that you are doing these days? What do you have in the pipeline? I would the audience would so that we can keep on following you and keeping an eye on all the great things that are coming ahead for you. Well, thank you, Rani. Um, you can certainly find anything about me at uh, brianproctor.com. Um, you can find, you know, where to get the book from there. Um, I have a blog, uh, a newsletter that you can sign up for. I only send out a couple of emails a month. I'm not going to inundate you with anything crazy. Um, it's strictly value content. Um, and you'll see what I'm doing there. Um, I'm speaking on a few stages around the world. Um, I will certainly be coming out with some more books. Um, so all of that will be announced. Uh, at, you know, at brianproctor.com. You can find everything there. Thank you, Brian. That is super exciting to know that you are coming out. You are publishing some more books. And I think we are, I'm definitely going to keep looking forward. And I have signed up to your email. So okay. I do get them and I keep reading them. They are really beautiful and easy to read, simple and straight to the point and really inspiring as well, I would say. Yes, thank you. And I think it, it does help the audience. It's good that it, it doesn't come often because mm -hmm. we get to appreciate it when it comes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So thank you so much, Brian, for taking the time to speak to the audience today. And well, I wish you. you. I was just going to say, I'm sorry. Thank you. It's been a pleasure to be here with you, Rani. You are welcome. And I wish you a lot of success in the years ahead and in everything that you do. And keep shining, keep being an inspiration because we need, we need you to share your stories about your, about your dad and your own experiences because that's how we will make an impact in the world. The more we share, the more you talk. So I'm really, really inspired by, by your book and by all the great things that you do. Thank you. And I would like to say a big thank you to the audience for watching, sharing, and subscribing. And we'll see you with some other special guests very soon. Thank you, everybody. And thank you, Brian. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone.